Okay, so this is a session to look at the site folder. For many of you who have worked for us for a number of years, it will just be a refresher on what um, each form is for, but for our new workers, this is our site folder. So it'll start off with a front cover, which will look something like this, okay? And then it'll have the contents, what's in the folder. Okay, so there's 10 sections within the folder. The first um, piece of information links to COVID-19. So there's the most up-to-date list of extended symptoms of COVID-19, which are loss of taste, high temperature, tiredness and fatigue, a persistent cough, headache, fevers or chills, muscles and body aches, lack of change or lack of change lack or change of taste and smell shortness of breath or difficulty breathing nausea and vomiting congestion or running nose sore throat and diarrhea okay so there's a pamphlet here for you to identify if there has there are any signs of covid-19 and if you do suspect someone to have these symptoms you will use the isolation area on site which we will discuss at a further date also within your folder, there are a number of laminated signs for you to use and um, put up on site. So things like use hand sanitizer, wash your hands regularly. And these are to go inside and out for both the children and the parents and carers and the workers to be mindful that they need to do this. We then have um, a section on ensuring that workers and volunteers have read the COVID guidelines and understand them. Each volunteer and worker will be sent the COVID risk assessment guidelines in a short video clip, okay? So this is for them to sign that they agree to the COVID guidelines that are in place and will adhere to them. And they also agree to the council's policies and procedures and safeguarding and data protection. So what I advise is when you hold the training um, on site on the Thursday and Friday before play scheme begins is that you get um, every member of your team there and then to complete these forms. These then need to be handed back into your link worker. Okay, so then you've got your COVID-19 checklist questionnaire that has to be asked every morning to every single parent carer who drops off their child at the setting. Okay, so allocate one of the site supervisors outside the building in the socially distant queue of parents and carers to carry out this process. If they ask, answer yes to any of the questions one, two, three and four and five, they are unable to attend because they've either got symptoms themselves or someone in the home has got symptoms or they've been told to isolate, okay? Question six is linked to track and trace purposes. So please note the answer to this and hand it to your link worker as to whether children are accessing any other community play provisions. If the answer to number seven is no, that they do not have a refillable drink, we strongly advise parents to go home or go to the shop and get one prior to the children coming in to site, okay? They have to have that refillable drink with them. Pat lunch is not required for any of the camps with the food on. The only, I don't think any sessions at all would be required pat lunch apart from the play and respite sessions where the children are able to bring a snack. Other than that, they should not be bringing any food with them, only a refillable drink. Number eight, all children must be collected by a responsible adult. Parents need to be aware of this because nobody can go home on their own, no matter how close they live to the play camp, okay? Even if someone lives just down the road, they can't just go home on their own. They must be picked up by a responsible adult, okay? If an adult does not turn up to pick up that child, you must phone the emergency contact numbers and ensure that someone does come and pick up the child. Okay, so then we have got an all about me form. Now this is a blank form, just in case you need it. Any children with one-to-one -one who one-to-one -one support will be coming to your site. You will already have their pen portraits within your folder because they would have already pre-booked in. Sometimes, it's not till the provision starts that you realise that another child who may be on your site 
does need that extra little bit of support it hadn't been brought to our attention before nobody had said this but from you know having them there on your site by day two or three you might think that child definitely needs a one-to-one -one support so this form is for you to hand to that child's parents so we can find out more about their needs and put one-to-one -one support in place for them if you're going to do this please notify us first so we can show we have enough staffing in place um but other than that, it should be fine to go ahead with that process. But in general, all children who require one-to-one -one support, your pen portraits will already be in your folder. So within your folder as well, there will be a log for you to complete in regards to your fire drill. A fire drill has to be carried out in the first week and then once a week thereafter. So the lead worker must bring the register to the assemble point which all site supervisors will be made aware of when they do their risk assessment on their venue. And the site lead then must ensure the premises are empty. In a genuine fire alarm, the need to safely evacuate the building due to fire would override any consideration regarding likely the impact of social distancing. So in a practice run, you must ensure that social distancing takes place, okay? Still keep your social distancing when you're walking out of the building. However, in the case of a rear fire, the risks outweigh this. So, you know, don't, you know, if the real fire is, get everyone out, do you know what I mean? It outrules the risk of the two meter rule in a sense. But for the fire alarm testing drill, do your two meter rule, okay? So then we look at um, safety. The child registers is next. So every day there is a daily register within your folder, within this section. And on this register, you have to list all the staff that are here and get them to sign in and the time they arrive and the time they leave. And the children as well also have to be signed in. Now you'll notice across the section that there are a few abbreviated words and I've given explanation here as to what they mean if you're not aware. So LA means looked after children. So these are children who are in foster care. CWD are children with disabilities. YC are young carers. And MED is medical needs, children with nut allergies, etc. Um, so on your registration forms, you'll already see these would have been filled out. So you just need to tick along these columns as to whether they are LA, CWD, YC or MED. You've got to put the age in, you've got to put the time they left, which probably for all of you will be um, 3 o'clock or 3.30, depends what setting you're on, and collected by. I would say the majority of collected by would be parents because they have to be collected by someone, um, a responsible adult, but it may be a nan, granddad, auntie. Okay, so then we have staff emergency contact forms, which I would advise you getting this completed on the Thursday and Friday you're doing your training. So this is so you can ensure that if something happens, say, to one of your staff members, you have all their details in place in case we have to contact home. So see if you can get these completed on the Thursday and Friday in the training and you then keep them in your folder for the whole time. Then there is an extra cleaning regime that's being put in place for COVID, telling you how to clean stuff and how frequently you need to clean stuff. We have a big clean um, done, a deep clean done every day. The cleaners come in from about 2, 2.30 onwards. But in general, throughout the day, assign people to carry out regular cleaning of hard services, door handles, um, play equipment, picking up the tissues and the rubbish, the floors, okay? So just ensure that you have a cleaning regime in place every day so we can limit the spread of COVID. Then we have within your folder um, a section on first aid. So if you have to carry out first aid on a child, you use the correct PPE, which I will list on the next page. But if first aid is carried out you have to notify parents okay so ensure that you don't just hand the form over to the parent and walk away ensure you explain you know little johnny tripped up today blah 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 we, uh, we did first aid on him blah 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 
Okay, if it's a serious incident, then an accident form will also need completing and senior staff need to be notified straight away. When looking at first aid and personal care, there is um, a charge here to use the correct PPE. So if you have a bump to a head where there's no blood, it's just gloves. But if you have a child vomiting, it's gloves, aprons, goggles and mask, okay? So it's being aware that you need to um, wear the correct PPE and ensure that this is in place. Then we've got the bang to the head form, which is separate to the first aid form. It's an addition, additional one again, because as we know, a child could have a bang in the head two o'clock on play scheme, but may not have a reaction to it till later on that evening. So this is a form you must complete, okay? and then hand it over to the parents with a full explanation and dialogue of what happened so the parents are aware what to do if their child has a reaction later on in the evening to their bang on the head. Okay, so this is an accident form which needs to be completed and handed to your link worker if an accident does happen. And these could be minor accidents, you know, um, children were skipping and they've tripped over and hurt themselves. Um, any major incidents or accident we need to know ASAP but small incidents that you deal with directly yourself um, you just need to complete this form in and hand it to your link worker don't let them build up in your folder and give 15 to the link worker at the end of the week because um, there'll be a big backlog of them coming to the office if you could get it to the link worker as soon as you can that would be great then we have um, an aggression um, form now when we talk about aggression this could be physical aggression it could be um, someone verbally insults you and you know this could be coming from a child it could be coming from a member of the public a parent carer it could be coming from a member of staff so if there is a violence and aggression episode that happens on your site this is the form to complete and um, to tick what happened and so we can address it um, from a manager's perspective okay again this needs to be handed in straight away to your link worker don't let it build up in your folder then there's a form um, in the back to list children with allergies okay so they could have a variety of allergies that we would need to be aware of well you would need to be aware of when planning activities so obviously um, be mindful of what you're doing to ensure that um, allergies are catered for um, we have a person on every site who's trained with EpiPen in case there's any allergic reactions. But this information you'll be able to gather from the registration forms as it will be listed on there. So do check them as soon as you have your registration forms and make your list of allergies there. So when you're planning activities, you know that little Johnny wouldn't be able to do at that activity um, because he's allergic to um, something within that activity, okay? Then we've got the safeguarding section, which you have a sheet, first of all, which gives you a few reminders of the types and signs of abuse and the essential steps you need to follow in general with safeguarding. Um, if you have any issues or concerns, please contact me straight away. That is my number there. Or if I'm unavailable, then ring Julian. OK, when I've spoken to you and we, we've assessed the situation and we've looked at it as to what has happened, I would then advise you whether you need to complete a red form. So you'll have a number of these red forms in your folder. Um, and if I ask you to complete that red form, if you can do it as soon as possible and get it back to me. Um, but always ensure you write down exactly what a child has said, okay? Do not ever change their words or amend them or put words into their mouth. Just write down exactly what they say. When we do the safeguarding training, I will go over this in more depth. But it's just to make you aware that these forms need to be completed. Again, hand it straight to your link worker or I will accept them being emailed through as well. Whatever way is easiest to get to me as soon as possible, okay? And we will provide support on any child protection issues that are raised. You will have support throughout the whole process. Then we have um, our equipment and resources policy. It's really essential that our equipment is looked after, it's kept clean and it's stored correctly. And it's really important that you treat it with respect. And at some point, Julian will go over the equipment that you've got on your site and come up with some ideas of what you can do with that equipment. 
Then we've got our visitors log. Now, I don't assume there will be many visitors coming to your site due to COVID. We're not expecting lots of people to be turning up at your sites. However, it could be a link worker turning up. It could be me and Julian turning up. Or it could be a teacher coming to the school who has to do something in their classroom. So if you do have someone turn up, they need to complete this um, site visitors log for our purposes and track and trace purposes. And then finally, in the back section of your folder is all your registration forms already completed because we know who's coming, okay? So this is a registration form. You can see all the different things on there. These will already be completed. One or two, for some reason, may be brought in at a later date. This just sometimes happen. They haven't been able to get their form into the school, but you will have a note in your folder telling you this. Um, little Johnny and somebody else are bringing their form on Monday when they arrive. You may have that odd nod factor to consider, but in general, they should all be in your folder. There will also be one or two spare ones because we always get a late referral. Can you take so and so, so and so on a site? So there may be one or two blank ones in the folder as well. But I will notify you or Helen will notify you. There's going to be a new child starting on Wednesday. We'll notify you this. Nobody is just going to turn up and say, I want to come in, please. Unless they've been pre-registered in, they're on our list that they're going to come. Or I've notified you or Helen's notified you, have got a new starter. People can't just turn up, okay? It's not an open access setting. It's a pre-booked in setting. So um, just be mindful of that and to notify us if someone does turn up at the door, ring us to check who they are. And obviously we'd have to explain that, you know, we haven't pre-booked in. So there's a process to go through. OK, so that's the site folder. Um, there's quite a lot in it, but when you get through it and you understand the paperwork, it's quite easy to understand.